Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Kevin with Bolt Outdoor Lighting and today we're going to talk through a project we did a few months ago. And if you like what you see, give us that like button and we'd appreciate it on the video. And um, so this project we were asked to come from the client to see his existing lighting system. So he already had a system in place for the front of the home. And um, you know, he saw what we were doing online. He liked what he saw. We were doing some neat things, so he called us to come give him a little bit of uh, consultation on what he may could do to, you know, enhance what he already has. So we went, met with him, and the system they had was done by a professional company eight to ten years ago. And back then, those techniques were pretty widespread, and they're perfectly fine in most cases. But as the years have gone by, new uh, new integration, new fixtures, uh, fixtures have gotten smaller, um, LEDs have gotten better, so uh, there's been a lot of changes in design techniques that we're going to go over today, which enabled us to give him a better outlook and a better portfolio to embrace that whole house that we're going to go talk talk through the, with that. With the, bah, 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 bah. We're going to talk through those things with you today, okay? Let's start off by what he had, right? So he had uh, drop-in fixtures. So what are drop-in fixtures? Well, it's where you have a fixture such as this and the LED lamp simply drops in. So, you know, MR16, MR11, MR8, bi pins, there's all kinds of sizes of LED bulbs that can go in these fixtures, right? So we use drop-ins still today, but we mainly have merged to integrated lights. And what is an integrated light? Well, an integrated light is um, a light that doesn't have a drop-in bulb in it. it the electronics, the, the chips, and the diodes, the source of the light are integrated into the fixture so you're getting um, a lot more efficiency and you can get smaller sizes so let's look at you know here's another typical drop-in fixture um, look at the size difference we can achieve when we need it right so we use drop-ins and we use uh, integrated but it's all about what are we lighting so what he had there he had existing drop-in lights that were a little too far away from the uh, home frontage. So you're getting more of a wash than you were if we were to bring these fixtures up closer, you're gonna get more of a graze to that architectural element. Where the, whether it's uh, brick or stone or siding even. So that was one method we changed in the design was we brought all his fixtures closer and then uh, the next thing that was uh, an issue was up, up above in a higher story, second story, they mounted in the gutter to try to get some of that second level of the home. Um, so back in the day, that was uh, acceptable by uh, a certain standard, if you will, is to put lights in the gutter and then shine back on the house. Now it's still okay today if your house that you're lighting is close enough to that gutter. If you're further than four, five, six feet, you're gonna get a massive washout effect. And it's just as down in the ground, we don't wanna be back for, we don't wanna come back far and wash back. We wanna be very close and more graze will actually graze. We want grazing. We don't want washing, okay? So that was the other method that we changed in his house was we took the fixtures out. They were drop-in. And so we changed from a drop-in mounted into the gutter to a smaller fixture that we mounted very close to the structure on the second story and even third. All right, so you don't want to see the fixture, you just want to see the result. So we want to hide our fixtures nine times out of ten, unless it's a path light, a decorative feature, such as a, 
a glass uh, showcase or an art bollard. You know, you want to see those because it's a piece of art. But you don't typically want to see the, uh, the workhorse fixtures in that design. You want to hide them as best as you can. We uh, do screwless mounting technology so we can just put the fixtures directly on the asphalt shingle and um, achieve that design element that we want. So that's what we did on the second story and then the th what we did we added to the areas that were missed prior. So we had some eaves on the second and third stories that we wanted to fill out as well so we could really see the breadth of that home at night. Um, some other things that we did, we added an art bollard instead of a traditional path light. And let me get you an art bollard. So here's an art bollard. This happens to be a, a big honking six by six. They call them six by sixes, but they make them in four inch and even two inch. So these and different patterns as well. So what this is, it projects the pattern that you have cut out in here and it shoots it out to the sidewalk or that front door area. And it's, it's an art piece during the day and then at night it gives you an artful display of workable, um, you know, illumines. Illumines? <laughs> workable uh, lighting so you have state safe stepping. And uh, so it's functional and it's artistic as well. So it has a dual purpose. Let me get you a traditional path light. All right. So here's a traditional style uh, path light, you know, the china hat and uh, the stem. Super typical. We still use these today. They're totally fine. Um, it's just that in this case, we chose to up the design element with his home with an art bollard. Okay. Right, so we covered the illumination technique from the ground we wanted to be grazing from up on the second stories we wanted to be grazing so we changed those two elements third element is the path lighting we introduced an artistic element at the front door uh, let's stay at the front door the next uh, item that we added was a core drill light okay why core drilling why would you want to drill out your concrete so core drilling is what it means. You're taking a core out of the existing walkway or driveway with a specialty uh, cutting tool, a wet or dry saw. This was done with wet, so it takes out a perfect core. And then you slip into place um, an actual light that can be recessed in that concrete, stone, woodwork, etc. right? So these are flush to the surface. You can walk over them, drive over them, etc. And this allowed us to put lights up as you go into that front door. Because we want, in a design, you want the element of giving them direction on what to look at and where to go. So we want them to come walk into that front walkway section, see a beautiful art, art bollard, and then also keep leading them to that front door by illuminating that area of stone that you see as you approach that front door. So let's look at another big area that we added was the right side of the home was really dark because that's where the garage doors are. So back in the day, a lot of people, they didn't have availability to do core drilling like they do today. So we put core drills again on the garage side and that gives a really nice full illumination especially for you know the family coming in from the activities at night. They know exactly where they're going. The, that side of the home is beautifully lit and then they open the door and then there's more light that automates as you come in that garage. So talk about safety you know safety 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 always now let's look at some uh, evolutions of lighting so to speak so you have fixtures back in the day they're just really big way too big so they've gotten them smaller over time okay over time you're seeing uh, manufacturers 
slowly bring the size down, right? So the size is starting to come down. Um, and like I said before, the techniques of fixtures, we bring out a fixture for a task at hand. So you got small, dainty wash lights, or you have a directional light, such as this mini spot. If we want to get even smaller, we can, believe it or not. We have a very unique light here that can be face down, up, sideways, doesn't matter. So it's all about the task at hand where we bring out our tools. This is our tools of the trade. Here's another mini light that does the same thing. This thing's so small, you could put it in a crevice of a rock or stonework or an art piece, garden art outside. You could light up a keypad at the front uh, gated entrance. These can be put in water features. These are IP, IP68 rated, so they're safe for water. So lots of cool things are being done now uh, with, with the choices we have today. And so with those choices, we brought, with, brought a fuller lighting scale and scope for his home. And then we got more efficient lighting because as lighting manufacturers evolve, their, their wattage requirements lowers. So we're reducing power consumption, which is super important for our environment. So like in other words, back in the day, they could put a four watt LED, which is efficient, right? How about a two watt? That'll do the same function and form that we need. How about a one and a half watt? Can we get away with one and a half? Because believe it or not, lumens at night is incredibly projective. People think, oh, I gotta blast this thing, man. Give me a 35 watt LED. No, bring it down because lumens at night really projects. Um, so you can get away with a lot less wattage and power consumption now. So that's another design technique is just not overlighting something, make it subtle enough. And you gotta think about what color is, am I lighting? What's the color of that subject? Cause you know, color ref refracts and reflects. So a light colored beige, you know, whites, grays, they're going to reflect a lot of this um, lumens off and, and illuminate very brightly without the need of heavy wattage. So that's the other thing we brought was a lower footprint for his wattage consumption, lower power bills, saving money, longevity, uh, integrated fixtures last longer, pure, plain, simple. So that's why we choose to do more integrated fixtures up in the air because I don't want to go on a ladder to replace something that the manufacturer is only going to give me a certain amount of uh, warranty with. I want to go with something that has a long warranty. So these integrated fixtures are four times as long from the manufacturer's warranty as the drop-in. So I pick and choose and, and pick my battles on paying for a more expensive fixture if it's up in the air, I'm going to go with an integrated fixture that gives me a long, long warranty. I don't want to be up there doing a service call when I don't need to. The other thing that happened on what we changed, like I said before, the gutter mounting. When you're washing back, back in the day when they used to wash back onto the houses, you are polluting. Uh, light into which a lot of cases is a bedroom window so your upper story windows typically are bedrooms it might be a bonus room might be a bathroom or a closet but a lot of times it is a, a bedroom so we don't want to pollute into that window at all so what we like to do is bring that fixture very close and shoot straight up we also like to split the window we don't typically like to go under a window if we can help it. If it's part of a design element and we have to hit a middle of a window, we will. 
but a lot of times we're asking, hey, what's this window for? Let's go inside. Are we going to be causing any pollution for these kids that have to be sleeping and all this stuff and parents as well? So we make a lot of judgment calls by going into the home. What can we see from inside out? And let's keep that pollution down to a minimum. So we, we were able to reduce the glare by a lot. So before he had a lot of light going into that bonus room that was in the middle. And since we changed our design techniques and fixed your choices, we were able to reduce that illumination pollution big time. So the client really appreciated that. So, so I think that's, um, you know, basically it today, we just went over those techniques. If you're thinking about uh, lighting, you know, choose a, a really good fixture that's going to get you what you want, but make sure you're thinking about wattage, size of the fixture, so you don't necessarily have to see it if you can help it, and, um, and things like that. And if there's something uh, that you'd like to know, put them in the comments below. We'd be happy to get back with you. And if you like what you're seeing, please uh, subscribe to our channel. We'd very much appreciate it. And um, so we're going to take it away. And uh, we hope you have a great day. And uh, remember, all things grow with love. And we'll see you in the next video.